Yami Yami, I just need a Kylo and a Ray. quit taunting me. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and uh, <laughs> this week, oh, this week, I am not ready for the weekly yet. It's too soon. There's too much stuff going on. New York Comic Con, Triple Force Friday, stuff to buy, toys to find. <gasps> Usually I have a list with bullet points, maybe information, and I haven't even had time to do that this week. I have a list... But it's just like, bun, bun, nothing else. I'm so, during this weekly, I'm gonna have to be looking down. I'm gonna have to be searching stuff right then, looking at pictures, some for the first time. I'm opening the folder going, what? What? Like I said, New York Comic Con was all day yesterday. Lots of reveals, lots of Hasbro press releases, lots of pictures to edit, lots of looking online for more pictures. What else they got? What else they got? <laughs> got to last night, I had to watch NXT from Wednesday because priorities. Boy, that Adam Cole and Matt Riddle match was woo! Then from there, I went out to Force Friday to see what my Walmarts were doing. Out of five Walmarts, only one had the skid out with the cube, and my first Star Wars figure of this season <laughs> was the off-world Jawa. They had the Mandalorian, they had all these other figures, but this is what I decided to buy first. Like I said, priorities. I did grab this, though, after talking to Veebs and saying, no, I don't need the carbonized jet trooper. Meh. Still grabbed it. Got home at 2 o'clock, fought Ami Ami for a little bit to get my SH figure arts Ray and Kylo. I finally went to bed at 3 a.m., got up at 7 a.m. to go hit stores again, and it was still available. Went to Target, decided, hey, I better grab some of the future, possible, harder to find figures here. So I got Cal Kestis, and I got the Mandalorian. Got to GameStop at Open. And I was able to get the carbonized second sister. A dude there asked me if I had found Danny Moonstar, and he let me grab one of those from him, so thank you, Carl. Star Wars Force Friday, of course I've got to pick up a Fortnite figure. <laughs> but then my favorite grab this morning, the GameStop exclusive Commander Fox. Now why did I go through all that? Because we're going to start out with Star Wars, what I would usually end a weekly with. But again, it's just... Anarchy today! Chaos! This week we got some promotional shots of some future figures. Hasbro did reveal... Cara Dune and Janna, but these pictures came before that, I think. But along with those pictures, we also got the single-carded Yavin Luke. What's with the eyeliner here? Is this the holiday special Luke? Also pictures of the Jet Trooper and then Wedge. Yes, a surprise. In this day and age, we can still get surprised. I think it is using the X-Wing Luke body, though, so it may be a little bit short. And the head is... Is that you, Apollo? Hasbro Pulse posted a schedule of upcoming Black Series product, and it listed Cara Dune, uh, Janna, and Yavin Luke as coming 12-1, December 1st. And I'm guessing since the Wedge pictures dropped at the same time, that he'll be coming in that same assortment. We also got pretty promotional shots of the mystery Black Series Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. We saw a picture of this boxed a couple weeks ago. The promotional shots again with the eyeliner. What is going on here? But that may just be a product of the promotional shots because uh, the Star Wars... Wait, hold on. Star Wars The Black Series on Instagram was able to find it in Australia at Zing Pop Culture. And it actually looks better in person without the eyeliner. He was also able to put the hood up. In the promotional shots, they had to have the hood back to prove, hey, it's a new head. But with the hood up where it's supposed to be, it looks like they went the same direction as the Amazon exclusive Emperor, where they've put strategic threads in places to make it lay down on the head to kind of mute it out. It, it actually looks pretty good. I haven't heard of any sightings in the US where it is a Walmart exclusive, but he is saying that in Australia, it is exclusive to Zing Pop Culture. In the UK, you can order them at Star Action Figures. And then I think it's being found in Canada at Walmarts. And then as far as pop-up surprise news goes, the German Amazon site posted a listing for an Episode 5 Chewbacca and C-3PO. The listing has them together, so I don't know if it's a two-pack or not. I, I'm guessing it is, since it is listed together. Chewbacca has a new head with kind of a different hairdo, and C-3PO actually tears apart and it looks like there's other parts that plug in to have wires hanging out. It, 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 they're gonna get me for another C-3PO. And in the process of that, another Chewbacca, which does come with the net harness thing to carry C-3PO around on his back. No release date or anything. This seems like they jumped the gun on this. This may be a reveal for Sunday at New York Comic Con from Hasbro. Why they're waiting till Sunday for the Star Wars reveals? 
don't know who the hell scheduled this during New York Comic Con. But you know what? It's good to have Star Wars news. It's good to have figures again. It's nice to have that feeling of, ooh, I gotta get out there and buy stuff. <laughs> you thought not having bullet points would keep it more concise, huh? The bullet points are to keep me from rambling too much. Hasbro also revealed a bunch of Transformers, War for Cybertron, Siege, well, okay, can't call it Siege anymore. I got too used to calling it Siege. It is now actually, I guess it's the next chapter in the War for Cybertron series. And there was actually two drops. They revealed some ahead of New York Comic Con, and then yesterday they did some more reveals. But we're going to go in the order of what I feel <laughs> for my shelf is importance. Which means, I don't know who the mini cons are, but there's this two pack, and there's this two pack. I forgot to write the names down. Oh, this one is the Hot Rod Patrol two pack. And this is the Micromaster Military Patrol two pack. And then there is a Battle Master Sound Barrier, which looks like he transforms into a shield and a ramp. Cool. And the ramp is for the Deluxe Ironworks, who transforms into a, a foundry, I'm guessing. I, I should read some of this, huh? A modular battle station. Voyager Grapple. I know who this is. I need... I, that's the thing about Transformers continuing. Even though it's going into a new chapter, we're still going to get characters that play off the figures we already have or outright replace them. Rod Hasbro, we'll get to that. There's Deluxe Power Dasher Chromar, again, reverting back to I, I, I don't know territory. Same thing goes for Deluxe Hotshot. It, it, he's familiar, and with all the colors in here, it, it, it looks like an interesting figure. So I may break my, if I don't recognize it, I don't buy it rule and get a cool looking toy, but that's how they get me. Then I'll have to go back and get all the other stuff I've skipped. But then it comes back around to what I recognize, Deluxe Smoke Screen. Deluxe Hoist. Deluxe Cliff Jumper. Is it crazy that we're getting Cliff Jumper before we get a Bumblebee in the line? I'm sure they're saving him for some big, huge reveal. Or when it gets to the next chapter, he'll be the, whoo, the, the, the thing that gets everybody into that line. But I'm not griping about getting Cliff Jumper first. I'm happy, but it, it's just kind of weird from a marketing aspect. Deluxe Wheeljack, which is probably my favorite reveal here. Right? Well, I can say that until I look at the next picture or the previous picture but Wheeljack was high on my list. Voyager Starscream, this is where we get into the territory of, come on Hasbro, I already bought the Siege Starscream, I just got Thundercracker at Walmart, I had the Skywarp pack in my cart on Amazon, but then you go and show this. Now, there's some similarities to the first figure, but there's also some differences. I like the smooth wing, it doesn't look like the bottom side of the wing is facing out. And then there's the alt mode. You guys know me. I care more about the robots. But having an actual Earth jet as the alt mode. Do I buy this Starscream? Do I skip on Skywarp? Do I hope that they take this Starscream and make Thundercracker and Skywarp again? Are they going to do another Rainmakers pack with this new mold? Come on, Hasbro. And that's the same for the leader class Optimus Prime. It's not fair. It's, it's, it's not fair. Essentially the same figure with some tweaks. It looks better. The chest opens. It comes with the Matrix. But biggest thing, well, the biggest thing in the package, also making it a leader class figure, would be the trailer. I guess I'm buying this again. And I'm sure as we roll along, we're going to get another Megatron. And who else are they going to redo? They're going to redo everything without the battle damage look to it? I was already in for the cell shaded Megatron and Optimus Prime, but... I'm seriously considering skipping those and just going for the Earthfall versions. At least until the next one where it's like War for Cybertron M Moon Crest. I don't know. DC Collectibles has sent along a press release with their newest DC Essentials figures. And as a lot of you have pointed out, it's a lot of reuse, which is the basis for this line. But it's also characters we already have. There's the new 52 Nightwing, which I'll admit... I had his costume and color scheme has grown on me. Speed Force Flash, another action figure that if I were to get it, I would have to fight the temptation of licking constantly. Don't make your toys look like, oh, well, don't make your adult collectibles look like Jolly Ranchers. That whole sentence sounds like it should be in a different video. Rebirth Batman, and then there is the return of Superman, Superman. But what caught me off guard, and I guess what I have been ignoring for a while now, even though I saw the banners and such at San Diego Comic-Con is deceased or deceased. Is this just, is this Marvel Zombies but DC? I have to admit though, the name is clever as hell. When you read it, you go, oh, 
that is brilliant. Why didn't, why didn't they do this 10 years ago? But in that line, you get dead Batman, you get dead Superman, you get dead Harley Quinn, even though I'm hearing that she's not actually dead in the series, but it's a, it's a cool look. And then dead Joker, or undead. I should have said undead through all that. Or did I say undead? I skipped on the Essentials Joker, the regular release, even though I buy most all Joker figures, just because, I don't know, the ones I found, the eyes were all bleep, and the head seemed small. This one looks really good, despite the blood and everything. <sighs> Dang it. But that was all leading up to New York Comic Con, where, uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, let's talk about the Bluefin booth. It appears they're upgrading the SH Figure Arts in-game Captain America to actually have the broken shield and the Mjolnir the hammer. Mjolnir the hammer! Mjolnir the hammer! I don't have a lot of info on this, I've just seen the picture floating around, but... I skipped on the first one. Do I need this one? Also at New York Comic Con, I'm guessing in the Bluefin booth, Storm Collectibles has shown, well, <laughs> we found out the reason they're now really pushing on Injustice is they showed an Injustice 1 Superman. I don't know, I never played the game, but dang it, Storm Collectibles is making a Superman. I thought they were just gonna stick with the big monstrous bad guy types, but nope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But also this week, Storm Collectibles solicited their Injustice 2 Dark Side. It's crazy looking. It's big. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of this. It's so great looking. Moving on. But no, it comes with four alternate heads. It comes with... Oh, gee. I really like the one with the kind of power effects coming out of it. But I'm also cool with the Omega Beams. Boy, these are all crazy. Just... It's big, it's imposing, it's storm collectible, so it'll be articulated. It's just a nice looking figure. They're on a roll, they didn't stop there. They also have the Mortal Kombat Sector. Sector? Or as us southern people would say, Sector. Again, another ninja to add to your Mortal Kombat display. I dig the candy apple red here. But not being a huge Mortal Kombat guy, I think it's the accessories here that sell me on this figure. The th opening up with the rocket shooting out, that's freaking cool looking. Not to even mention the big smasher. That thing's huge. Is that going to come in a standard package or is it going to be assembly required when you get it? Mesco was also, of course, at New York Comic Con showing off some cool stuff. Let me look in my folder. A lot of this stuff we did see at San Diego Comic-Con, like Conan, still looking awesome. The Bluto and Popeye 2 pack, I'm gonna need this. Ghost Rider needs to hurry up and get solicited, along with Morbius. I don't know why I'm drawn to this thing. It, it just, it's skin tight costume, that's it, but it looks amazing. Iron Fist, looking so much better with the sash, I dig it. It, it breaks up the sea of green, it, it makes it look like a costume not just pajamas. I don't need this with it. Looks like they've been working on the Gambit figure. The coat looks thinner, but it has more detail to it. It looks more... But the pink on the chest is what gets me. It's just another lickable element to an action figure. But I don't know. It just stands out, but it doesn't stand out. But opening the show, the big reveal was Mr. Freeze. Ooh as a big thing with the big armor parts. The cloth looks a little bit baggy, but I'm okay with that because it may be kind of winter wear. It may need to be thicker. I don't know. If they put lights in this sucker, it's gonna put it over the top. But there were tales going around New York Comic Con. Tales of a mystery box within the Mezco booth. They opened that box today and turns out it was a 112th Collective DC Wonder Woman Classic Edition, which promptly went up for sale on the site. I was looking at 9 a.m. still driving around looking for Star Wars figures. And I, what, a drop right now? Comes with her lasso, both out and circled around. Comes with a spear, comes with a sword, comes with a shield. It also has her cape and then two alternate faces. They both look a little angrier than I'd like my Wonder Woman. But it, it looks like a nifty, Mezcoized classic version of Wonder Woman. $90, but what's throwing me is the estimated delivery date of November of this year to January of 2020. Now that's usually pushed back a little bit, but this is Mezco exclusive. So I kind of feel like these are already in some form of production. They're already getting made somewhere. I don't know. It seems like the exclusives get made a little bit faster. Am I, am I thinking of that right? Maybe the wrong kind. As you can tell from the intro, Plunderlings has announced another add-on to the Kickstarter that they're running right now. Last week was Fists. 
You could get it in different colors to add to any of the plunderlings you've chosen. But now there's little non-articulated bodies called hatchlings that you can add to your order, any color to match any of the plunderlings you have. That way you can store the extra hands and heads on those. That's that's freaking brilliant. Usually we take all that stuff, put them in a bag, or they stay in the box, or they go somewhere, and <laughs> a couple years later you're thinking, oh, that's where those went. But now you can actually display them for five bucks a piece. I mean, it's a little body. Yeah, they're not articulated, but they, they add more to the display. Time's running out on these, so get over to the Kickstarter support, throw some money in there. Let's get to the other stretch goals. Let's see how far this goes. Kind of a surprise this week, I was sent pictures of, what is it, a Loot Crate Tech Shield Batman. Now this is the NECA Keaton Batman repainted in gold. I guess this is an homage to an older action figure. But you have to go through Loot Crate to get it. Now, I haven't looked at all the specifics yet. I thought Loot Crate was going out of business or going bankrupt. But apparently some company that is involved with NECA somehow or owned by NECA. Again, I haven't looked at all the specifics, but in some way NECA is now connected to Loot Crate. I think. <laughs> Again, Star Wars toys. So I don't know the ins and outs of actually getting this figure. Apparently you have to sign up for Loot Crate, get a code, then order it. But people are talking about if you do it now, you don't actually get the code. Again. I've never done Loot Crate, and I don't really need a gold-colored Batman, but it's neat for those of you who have nostalgia for this figure. Okay, now I'm actually adding this after because I finished this video, I went in there, I started looking, and NECA has something else up on Loot Crate. It's Loot Launcher. It looks like kind of a Kickstarter thing. You have to sell 3,000 crates in order to get this made at $50 a crate, but it is a limited edition exclusive Spirit of Splinter action figure, iridescent paint applications, cloth robe, and LED campfire base. <laughs> then that's at lootcrate.com. Is this going to be like a loophole for NECA to get some of the stuff that they can't distribute themselves? Do, I, what, I don't know. But with Batman and now Splinter, we going to see more? Boss Fight Studios was set up at a show recently and they had on display the control art for their Legends of Lucha Libre, Conan. It's awesome that Conan comes with two alternate heads, two different looking masks. But also, to go along with their prototype of Ray Phoenix, is a, a unpainted prototype of Pentagon Jr. We're gonna have the Lucha Brothers in six inch form, a six and a half inch form. I can't wait, I need them. Talked about the Mattel Jurassic World Amber Collection being found at GameStops last week, and you can actually now order the Raptor and Ian Malcolm. The trouble is people that have pre-ordered it are still waiting for their orders, but if you go now and order it, you will receive them within a couple of days, like so. I mean, I just, I don't even remember when I, it was just a couple days ago. But my pre-order for the Batman vs. TMNT, Donatello, and Batgirl, I haven't seen that, even though I saw that at GameStop this morning. I don't know. The Bandai Warhammer Ramirez Intercessor that we got pretty promotional shots for last week, it's been announced when that will be solicited. And this may be partial reason for the over $100 price tag on this thing. It's because... Games Workshop will actually be selling 9,000 pieces of this. They'll take the orders for the 9,000, they'll send it off to Bandai, Bandai will produce those and then distribute them to the customers who have already paid. So I don't know if this is a limited edition item because it also says an overage will be made for hobby shops, specialty stores, but it says do not depend on that if you want one of these. Go to Games Workshop tomorrow, Saturday, and put your order in and then it should ship in the second quarter of 2020. Last night I posted a video talking about the New York Comic Con Marvel Legends reveals, but I wanted to throw out a couple more points. Plus we ended up getting pretty promotional shots after I made the video. The Marvel Legends Stan Lee, it is up for pre-order on Target.com right now for, well, it says a June release, but it's not exclusive to Target. Target just gets first dibs on the pre-orders. It should be available from other places later on. Also didn't get a chance to look at the box yesterday. It's looking spiffy. It's special. It's Stanley. That's much like the Punisher War Machine that popped up at GameStop first, 
people thought it was GameStop exclusive, but it is fan channel. This week we got sent the press release and pre-orders for it went up on Dorkside Toys, Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth for a ship date of very soon. It should be in the next week or two. Last night I talked about the Hasbro Marvel Legends 80th Anniversary Retro Deadpool. It will be at London Comic Con, uh, Paris Comic Con at the end of this month available for order from everywhere else on November 4th, but we have seen pictures of it loose from places. I have heard that some Best Buys have this in the back room already. That seems a little bit weird to have it a whole month ahead of time. I can only see that leaking out into stores very soon. Like I said, we also got the promotional shots for this after I made the video. Dr. Doom is looking amazing. He's got the alternate head. If you zoom in really, really close on the face under the hood, look at those eyes. They have a little orange sparkle to them. It's kind of scary, but it's kind of awesome at the same time. Hulk looking a little bit rougher than I thought it was, but that's okay. It's a big hulking female body. I, I, I like it. I like all the extra details thrown in here. Deadpool, Give me all the Deadpools, even the blue version of this. I'm almost thinking if the blue was a little bit darker, get a Cyclops head and you'd almost have an astonishing X-Men Cyclops if you take off the straps and stuff. But the arms are wrong, the angles are wrong. I just want a good astonishing Cyclops. Sunspot is on the Bucky Cap body. Yes, it's a little bit outdated, but they've added stuff to the boots. He has the collar and he has the effects and then the effects that add on. It kind of hides the reuse of that body. Plus the head looks freaking amazing. And the effects were almost made for Sunspot with the bloop, 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 bubbles. It was pointed out to me several times yesterday that Warpath uses the Omega Red body. That works for me. It's big, but it's not super 90s hulking big. Johnny, somebody said it looks like Randy Orton in the face and whoever said that, mm, human torch out of nowhere. Sue, I'm digging the effect, but I hate the pose here. It just makes it look all gappy. Mr. Fantastic, hey Hasbro, why you make a toy of Dan Larson? The only hope I have of getting an action figure head is movie Obadiah Stane. I'll agree with most of the gripes. The fingers are creepy looking, but I just won't use them. He'll just be standing there with the other hands. The thing, I'm digging the new head, I'm digging the weight belt, <laughs> I'm digging just the overall look, even though it's what we essentially already have, but hopefully the orange is matched so you can switch and swap heads. And we're not ending on Hasbro, there's still more. I, I know, I, I, it's so weird. That's what happens when I just throw words at a screen and I get up here and bleh. Kyoto has put up a teaser announcement for an amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia All Might. As you all know, my original plan was to use the McFarlane Toys All Might with the Figma Midoriya and Bakugo, but with amazing Yamaguchi jumping into the... <laughs> there's other options. It's insane. Hopefully we'll see the Rebel Tech All Might and Deku soon because I'm excited. And then this week, Jazzwares Mike DeCamp on Instagram posted a teaser of the Fortnite Legendary series Valkyrie. She's looking a little cocky. I like the little smile and of course there will be different faces but the overall look uh, just I, I need this. This should have came with the series we're getting right now. Double elbows on a female figure? And then the most important action figure reveal of this week would be the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series Peely. I don't even play the game, but I love a banana with arms and legs. And Jazzwares takes it even further by giving him alternate faces. That's not gonna stop me from buying the McFarlane one because that'll be Peely Sr. And then the Jazzwares one can be Peely Jr. And then I'll get the shopping cart, put them both in there, they'll ride around and I can make all kinds of jokes about groceries. That's it for this week. I am sorry. I apologize just for the randomness. Just, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I should be better prepared. It's the weekly, man. This is my favorite part of the week. But because of that, I couldn't just skip it. You know, uh, I'm going to push it off so I can write down some bullet points. No! Gotta talk about toys, especially in the midst of New York Comic Con. Got any more of them toy pictures? As always, all these pictures will be available on the Foosh Front page at noon tomorrow, Saturday. And along with that will be links to pre-orders, more information on it, stuff that I should have had ready, but I didn't. But I love you. I gotta get up here. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the Foosh. I gotta go find more Star Wars figures. I'm out!